In today's video, I'm going to break down and simplify the commercial real estate appraisal process just for you. What I'm going to go over is uh, what a commercial uh, appraisal is, uh, when to do it, who does it, and why you do it. Then I'll share with you the three keys to really simplifying the appraisal process, and that is what you need to gather to get one done, the three methodologies of valuing a commercial property, and lastly, what do you do if you don't agree with the commercial uh, appraisal value, right? You just spent thousands of dollars on the appraisal and he gave it to you and you don't like the value. Is there something you can do? Of course. I'm going to save that for the very end. All right, so let's get started. All right, so I'm going to start off with what a commercial uh, appraisal is. Number one, commercial appraisal is a calculated estimate of value for any type of commercial property. It could be a multifamily property. It could be uh, self-storage. It could be an office building, a retail center, even a mobile home park, okay? An industrial, it could be a warehouse, any form of commercial property. All right, now, next is when. When do you do a commercial appraisal? Well, you can do it anytime you want if you already own the property. But if you're under contract, if you're under contract, you're going to get the appraisal done during the loan process and the lender will order it for you. You pay for it, but the lender will order it for you. So that's when it's done. And next is who does it? Well, uh, a, a commercial appraisal is very complex. So who, who does it is a professional licensed appraiser, right? With specialized skill and knowledge on commercial real estate. You can't use Joe Smith, who appraises single family homes to appraise your 100,000 square foot office building. It's not going to work. Okay. All right. And lastly, why do you uh, do a commercial appraisal? So what's the reason? What are some reasons? Well, the first reason is if you're deciding to sell uh, your uh, commercial property, you want to list it and you'd like to know what price so you can do an appraisal. Next, if you're making an offer, on a on a uh, property you may want to do an appraisal to find out what it's worth okay next is a lender will use an appraisal to determine if your property is worth the loan that you're requesting so and so a lender will use an appraisal to estimate or calculate the size of your loan next is if you're in lease negotiations an appraisal could be very helpful all right next is uh, this is very common if you are disputing your property taxes. If you say, Mr. County, my property taxes are this high, they should be here. You need to order an appraisal to show them that your property isn't worth this. It's only worth this. Therefore, reduce my property taxes. Okay, You can do that. Next is if you have a, uh, for legal matters, if you're, if you're disputing uh, a contract of any sort, you can use an appraisal to help you with that matter. And lastly, if there is a forced sale or short sale or something going on where you have to sell the property and it needs to be liquidated and need to know what the liquidation value of the asset is, you will order an appraisal. All right, okay, so that's that. So now I quickly wanna jump into the three keys to simplifying the commercial appraisal process. Let's do that next. Here is key number one in really understanding the commercial appraisal process. All right, key number one is what do uh, commercial appraisers look for when they're going to uh, appraise a commercial property? All right, and number one is uh, property details. They need to know the property type, the building type, the square footage, the size, the functionality of the property. Right, the condition of the property, of course. Any amenities in the property, like a pool, clubhouse, uh, you know, rooftop access, things like that, and then unit mix. Unit mix is important, okay? Especially multifamily. Let me ask you a question: For a given 12-unit apartment building, which one has more value, right? If you have 12 studios or 12 three bedrooms, three 12 three bedroom units, right? Of course, the three bedroom units are going to have more value. So the unit mix is really important when you're dealing with um, uh, multifamily, okay? All right, next is zoning records. You need to check the zoning records. Here's another question for you. Does zoning affect the value? Yes, it does, okay? Here's a quick example. Let's say we have an office building here 
and it has an adjacent plot of land that belongs to the building and the land is zoned residential, meaning you can build apartments, right? And then on a similar property, the same size office building, but the land is zoned agricultural where you can only put a farm on it, right? So which one is worth more, the residential land or the farmland? Of course, the residential lands. Therefore, zoning is important, okay? All right. Um, next is recent sales comparables. So this is one of the key things in valuing a, uh, a commercial property for an appraiser is to know what uh, similar properties are on it, around the market, what they have sold for, so he can do a comparison and figure out the price of the subject property. So the key word is recent. You can't use two-year-old or three-year-old uh, sold uh, properties as a, as a sales comparable, okay? All right. Next is rental information. You need to know what the rents are for the building, what the occupancy is, right? So a building that has really, really low occupancy, guess what? The value is going to be suppressed, okay? Next is length of leases. If you have, uh, let's say, a shopping center and the leases all expire next year, all of them, right? As opposed to another building where the leases expire 15 years later, which one has more value? This one with the longer leases, okay? And then and next is current market trends. So the appraiser has to really understand what the current market trends are. So is the area growing and prospering? Is it stable or is it on a downward trend or job losses and companies closing down and, and the economy is not doing well? They need to know that because it does affect the value of the property. And lastly, replacement costs. And the question is uh, to help them determine replacement costs is what if the building burns down, right? What's going to cost to rebuild it to the exact same way? They need to know what those replacement costs are. Okay, so there we go. That's key number one and what they need to do in an appraisal. All right, let's move on to key number two, which is basically how an appraiser values a commercial property. Let's do that next. All right, here is key number two. How do appraisers value commercial real estate? What I'm going to do is use a 12-unit apartment building as an example, okay? All right. Uh, so there, there are three methods or methodologies that appraisers use. Method number one is called the sales approach. Method number two is called the income approach. And method number three is called the cost approach, okay? I'm going to go over each uh, with you, give it a quick example, and you can see it's pretty simple, okay? All right. Uh, method number one is the sales approach, okay? Now, I'm using a 12-unit apartment building again, okay? So, so with the sales approach, the appraiser has to get comparable sales data, okay? So he has to go around in the neighborhood, in the area, in that general market, and find a similar property and see what it sold for, okay? And remember, it has to be a recent sale. So let's, let's use an example here. Let's say the appraiser did that, and he goes, okay, I looked at four different apartment buildings and it averages out to be about $100,000 per unit or sometimes $100,000 per door. Okay, so let's say that was his result. Okay, here's how you calculate the value. You take your 12 units, okay, and you multiply it by your average of $100,000 right, per door and, and it comes out to be a $1.2 million valuation. So there you go, all right? So that's how they do the sales approach, okay? Now, method number two is the income approach, where they take the income of the property and they use that to determine the value, which is very common in a commercial property. And as you know, most of our students have made most of their money that way by buying a, a commercial property, increasing the rents over the next few years, and then having the value worth this much, and then having a loan amount this much and creating that much wealth, okay? All right, so in the income approach, what you're gonna to have to do is get the NOI of the property, the net operating income. You're gonna to have to get the market cap rate, okay? So the market cap rate are, the market cap rate is not the deal cap rate. The market cap rate is what other properties have sold for, okay? What their cap rates are, okay, when they sold. So that's the market cap rates. Get the property's NOI, Get the market cap rate. Here's an example. The value of the property is equal to the to the NOI of the property divided by the market cap rate. Okay? So let's say we had an NOI of the property of $72,000 per year, and the market cap rate is 6%. 
you do the math and it equals 1.2 million. Okay, so now you know how to calculate uh, the, uh, the income approach. Let's go to number three. Method number three is the cost approach, okay? What the cost approach is basically, what if the property burns down, right? What will it cost to build a, a replica of the property that burnt down, okay? All right, um, so number one is you have to get, the appraiser has to get the cost to rebuild the property, okay? Number two, he has to get the cost in a dollar per square foot uh, uh, way, all right? So, for example, let's say he finds out that to rebuild this 12-unit apartment building, it's going to cost him $300 a square foot to rebuild the entire building, okay? So you're going to go out and get a builder and architect that's going to cost you roughly uh, $300 per square foot to, to erect this 12-unit building again if it burns down, okay? Let's say the building size for the 12 unit is 4,000 square feet. To calculate the value, you're gonna take the $4,000 in square footage, uh, multiplied by the $300 per square foot, and that equals 1.2 million. Got it? Okay, so a square footage times dollar per square foot equals your value. Okay, so there you go. Method number one is the sales approach. Method number two is the income approach and number method number three is the cost approach. This is how it works, ladies and gentlemen. So it's not that complicated. There's just a lot going into it to calculate those numbers accurately. All right, okay, let's go to key number three, which rarely anyone talks about. Let's do that next. Here we are with key number three. Key number three is controversial and is rarely spoken of uh, on the internet. So I'm going to talk about it today and that is what if you don't agree with the appraised value, right? So what if the appraiser said, Peter, your property is worth this and you go, no, it's not. It's worth more, right? Or, or what if the appraised value comes up short? Meaning that I'll use the 12 unit apartment building, uh, that's, uh, that I have under contract for $1.2 million. And let's say I, uh, the appraisal comes up short like a hundred thousand dollars so i have it under contract for 1.2 but the appraisal report comes in at 1.1 so there's a hundred thousand dollar gap what do you do right plenty of things you can do right number one is you can move forward okay just because a uh an appraisal comes up shorter than the purchase price doesn't mean the deal's dead okay you can move forward you just have to pay the difference okay and if if the difference is small and it's a good deal without an upside, maybe you should do the deal, okay? So number one, you can pay the difference. Number two, you can order a second appraisal, right? So if you don't agree with the appraisal you just received, you can say, I'm not using that one. I'm gonna order another one. You can do that. We've done that several times and it has worked, okay? And number three, you can contest it. So you can dispute the value of the appraisal. You can say, Mr. Appraiser, the, uh, you're using data that's wrong, right? You're using something that's 30 miles away when we have properties right in this neighborhood to support the value, right? Those type of things happen. How do you do that? Okay, there's a way to do that. All right, so here's how you do that. Uh, so when you wanna contest or dispute uh, an appraisal, you don't use the words contest or dispute, okay? Here's why. It's offensive to the appraiser, right? They're human beings, they're professionals, they do this for a living, and here you are come along and say, your work is crap. That's what you're saying, right? And so they can take it the wrong way, and then they will not change the appraisal. They're going to they're gonna batter you. So instead, what I want you to do is take a gentler, more professional approach, okay? Instead, you're going to say this, and this I learned from a, a professional commercial appraiser, okay? This is this is what he says to do, and it works. He says, say this, uh, Mr. Appraiser, I'd like to submit a reconsideration of value. See, just to change your words, I'd like to submit a reconsideration of value. Basically, would you reconsider the data that you use to come up with my value? Most times, they're very receptive to that, okay? Now, if you do that, then be able to uh, back up your request, okay, with concrete data. Again, if if they use uh, some uh, comparable sales properties, 
that you don't agree with that are too far out, maybe not comparable to yours, and you believe there's some comparable properties nearby, and, and if you're right, they will reconsider it. All right? Okay. All right. So there you go. So you do have a way out and a way in if you don't agree with the appraisal. Got it? All right. So, you know, I wanted to end here, but I'm not. So what I want to do here is after I wrote number three, I think there's some, there is some frequently asked questions on appraisals. Uh, just a, just the three I would like to do with you that I think are very interesting for you. So let's quickly do that next and I'll come back and wrap it up. See you soon. All right, here are the top four frequently asked questions for commercial appraisals. All right, I'll keep it quick for you. Number one is, can I hire my own appraiser if I'm under contract? Answer is no, right? So here's the situation. You have a, you're a 12 unit property under contract. You're, you're, uh, and then you call the lender, hey, Mr. Lender, can I use my own appraiser? The lender will say no because they do not want you to influence the appraiser at all, right? So it would be the, it would be the appraiser of the bank's choosing, right, to do the appraisal. So you can't, uh, you, you, you have nothing to do with it. All right. Okay. Except pay for it. Okay. All right. Number two, what does it cost and who gets a copy of the appraisal? Do you give a copy to the seller? Well, it's going to cost you between, for a really, really small commercial property, $500, for an average size commercial property, between two and $5,000. So it's not cheap, right? It costs a lot more than a residential appraisal, but there's a lot more information there. Okay. Now, who gets a copy? Uh, because it's yours and you paid for it, the lender gets a copy and you get a copy. Anybody outside of that needs your permission. It is, it is not for the public, right? It's not to be shared. Does a seller get a copy if you're under contract? No. Especially if you are uh, negotiating with the seller and you think you have a good deal. You do not want to show him that it appraised for 1.3 and you're buying for 1.2. That wouldn't be smart. So you do not show it, show it to the seller. Okay. All right. So, uh, FAQ number three, how long is the appraisal good for? When you have a single family house, a single family home appraisal, it's pretty, it's, it's good for 60 to 90 days, right? For the most part. Now, for a commercial appraisal, it's about the same. I would say it's between three and six months is, it's good for. It depends on the area, the market, the lender, all of that. But for the most part, on average, three to six months. Okay. Now, here's a very important one that people always ask is number four, can I increase the property value before I have the appraisal? And the answer is yes. Okay, you can. Um, here are three quick things to think about. Number one is first impression is very important. Okay, first impression. So imagine the appraiser is driving up to your property. He gets out the car, right? And he sees a beautiful green lawn. He sees, he sees newly painted front doors. He sees uh, there's no trash in this immaculate. That sets him in a good mood, right? And on, on the contrary, if he dries up and if he sees unkept landscaping, it needs paint, there's garbage there, there's people hanging out, it's a mess. His mindset is the rest of the property is a mess and it's not going to get the highest value. Okay. So first impression is important. So before you have the appraisal, make sure the property is looking spiffy. Okay. You can uh, do some landscaping. You can do power wash. You can do paint. You can reseal the parking lot. You get the picture. All right. Um, secondly, if you have um, updated electrical or plumbing or HVAC, let the appraiser know because that matters to him. Okay. That matters. All right. All right. And lastly, um, put your property in its best financial picture. Okay. Here's what I mean. I'll be very short with this. If you show the, uh, the appraiser a rent roll, for example, and you have 50% vacant, right? So uh, in your 12 unit property, you have six units that are down, they're not fixed up, and and uh, and the financials show that, that you're short on rent. Guess what? He's gonna deem you for that for that poor occupancy, okay? Because the numbers will be poor as well. The NOI will be lower, and you're just asking for a lower valuation, okay? All right, got it. All right, okay, those are the top four FAQs. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you want to learn more about what we do and what we, how we teach our students to create uh, wealth with commercial real estate, go ahead and apply to our protege program. The link will appear on the screen. 
Uh, if you would like more information like this, like this training, if you enjoy this channel, go ahead and subscribe. Or if you just want to read a book on commercial estate investing, a link will appear on the screen. It's our best-selling book, Commercial Real Estate for Beginners. Go ahead and check it out. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'll see you at the next video.